Welcome back to the Forensic Detailing Channel. Do not forget to smash, or just hit, smash that subscribe button and the bell. Today, the 10 areas of the car that get missed when you detail a car, generally. <laughs> and when I say that get missed, that I miss frequently as well, and I notice and I think, hmm, and it should probably be good to have like a list of them up somewhere so you don't forget to do them every now and then. And there are areas you might not need to clean every single time, but if you don't do them, then it gets to the point where you notice it and you think, ooh, you get the idea. Okay, number one is underneath the wheel arches in here. That little recess collects up dirt and the dirt sticks in there on that little lip. And then that dirt stays wet and moist and keeps the paintwork moist. And when you get little chips underneath, down to the metal if you've got a metal wing some of them aren't you know some of them aren't like steel nowadays i think i don't know what that is that's aluminium maybe but with the old uh, metal ones that you can then get rust in the arches same with the front same with the rear um so every now and then getting there with a good brush and just work all of the dirt out of there pre soak it all out with loads of pre-wash first and then by the time you're doing all the contact stuff it's all softened, a good stiff brush, even like a little toothbrush or something. Then once it's really squeaky clean, you could put some uh, sealant in there or something like that just to help the dirt not stick. And just make sure you do it every now and then. So that is the first one. The second one is the absolute classic. And I think I've probably done it um, in this wash where I haven't done a good job, but I will, I will get it if I've missed it, is the wheel nuts all in there so when you're cleaning the alloy wheels you tend to go into barrel brush mode don't you it's very difficult to do on this car um and the faces and you get your mitt all around here and sometimes you can forget to get the, the hogs hair usually does it or if it's really dirty the elastic brush and just poke out all the dirt around the wheel nuts and that also <laughs> means when you get your wheel nuts changed they're not full of dirt and hopefully it won't scratch up the paint a bit less or you know well, we're not too worried, but you know, it's a, that's what it's all about, isn't it? The next one, and this is a real classic one, and I could probably show it to you now, is right in here. <laughs> right in here, for some reason, even if you pressure wash the hell out of it, let's just drop these. Come on, there we go. And I noticed I'd missed this on the Porsche. Right in there. Oh, I knew we need a torchy. It's where the torch didn't work. Oh, yeah, it does, yeah. Right in there, you always get dirt, you see? And that's because I just haven't done it. I just missed it. It's a, you missed a bit. It's a bit that I don't often clean. So that's a good one to get. Um, okay, the next one, this is a classic, uh, is underneath the number plate up here. Again, because you're cleaning from the top down, you sometimes forget to clean under things. So sometimes just getting a good hog's hair in there and some APC and just scrubbing over it and then blasting it all down and making sure you get all the, this paintwork bit when you get the, the mitt out, etc. or just use the hog's hair brush. And just clean that bit and around the number plates in there. And I often bring the car in and I forgot to do that bit and it's all dirty. And uh, you know, if you don't get it, it builds up. So underneath the plates and, um, Apply that to the front grills as well, because again, when you're reaching down, you forget to sometimes do up. So it's always good to have that hogshead brush and just get underneath there, you know, to make sure that's all clean as well. And you notice it if you're bringing the car into polish, that's when you see all these bits you've missed. Um, okay, the next bit is the door hinges in here. So they're nice and pretty clean on this car. Every now and then, it's really worth just getting in there with a microfiber cloth. Um, it also gets wet in here. And if you don't bung a cloth in there, you can get all that water spot build up. And if you polish your car, you can often find lots of polish on the inside of this bit. So that's a bit that gets neglected. Again, on the M4, it's pretty good because I've kept on top of it. On the Porsche, I didn't do a great job of, of that. And I probably just need to spend 10 minutes just doing that job, you know, to get it done once properly. Um, 
Okay, the next one is the common one. We're so obsessed, this is the most common one. We're so obsessed with keeping the top half of the car clean, the paintwork looking good, because that's all the bit you see. But the undercarriage of the car is the bit that probably benefits from being cleaned the most and getting all that salty, corrosive road film off of it. You know, some of you might do that every single time you wash your car. I don't, I tend to do it every like six months. Um, you can use the Karcher hack where you flip the patio washer disc upside down, which works well, or you can get an extension arm that's bent that I've got, um, and that can go under and you can just give it a blast out a bit more regularly. Just keep that bent arm with your pressure washer so it reminds you to do it. Um, again, yeah, I don't do it every single wash, so I'm guilty of um, not doing this. And also, just by the way, brief interlude, you cannot expect if your car, if you're taking your car to a professional detailer to have a maintenance wash, you can't expect them to do all of these bits. Why? Um, they could, but it, it, if you do all of the bits like this, the undercarriage and all this, the time goes up. So a maintenance wash, you usually want that done in, you know, an hour, two hours, whatever. And it's just a thorough safe wash of the car, but it can't get all of these bits. And uh, so it's really down to you as an owner to just keep an eye on the bits, these bits here that I'm talking about and do them yourself. Um, the next bit is... I always find underneath the boot, like if you don't keep on top of this, this bit here can get all grubby and dirty and the hinges on certain cars. These hinges are great, actually. They're really, they're not, lots of hot hatches and stuff have a little greasy pair of hinges on them and you get a lot of dirt build up in here that doesn't often get cleaned. So always, you need to dry it off, you know, or else you get water spots all in under here. Um, and same really with the underside of the engine, um, the engine bonnet. Um, this, you see, just from where I've washed it, it just needs a little wipe down to get all the like water spots and dirt off it. And again, with the underside of the hinges, just keeping them kind of clean, uh, they can fill up with leaves and stuff that fall in here. So getting all that kind of stuff out as well is really important. Um, I think, you know, if you're keeping a reasonably nice car, um, yeah, it doesn't matter what the car is, but if you're trying to keep that car to a good standard, then you've got to do these things. The next thing, guys, is a bit like the undercarriage, is underneath the seals. So many times I've washed my car and I've brought it in and I've missed a bit under the seals. So when you pre-wash, it's good to try and blast that under seal out. But if you look under here from where I've been driving very carefully, where is it? Oh, this one's not too bad. This one's not too bad. But there is rubber and stuff under here, and that gets really contaminated and gritty. Um, now, I'm not fussy about the finish of the underside of those seals because they get smashed. Not literally, but they just get so much road and dirt things flinging up on them. They're always they're going to be marks and stuff under there. But it's a good thing to perhaps clay, clay that area off once a year, you know, um, and, and just give it a, a polish and make sure you protect it um, or else it will get rough and really dirty and horrible, you know, and I don't do a good job of that. So I need to improve on this. What else? Oh, the wiper recesses. So they can be really hard to access in here, but then you get a lot of dirt gets trapped around the wiper blades at the bottom and grime. So you just need to make sure every now and then you get hog's hair brush in there work your way around and then blast it out with a pressure washer. Perhaps when you're doing an engine bay clean, it's the ideal time to do that. that that's, all this stuff is all over my gulf as well. All those, these areas I'm talking about are, are this, just disgusting because I've probably never done them. <laughs> I don't care about that car. Um, and the classic thing, I think, this is just a really easy one. And again, this is one that I notice lots of times when I wash my car and I bring it in where I'm probably just rushing and I just wash the rear quarter, I don't always get underneath the bonnet. Um, you know, and I, I can always find a little bit in the corner here that I've missed. And that bit gets really dirty as well. So it's like, I try and remember to really blast out that rear quarter and I try and remember to contact clean it as well. Okay, so that, I think we've done everything there. Rear bumper wiper processes. Uh, under seals, 
Under seals? Oh yeah, under the seals. Boot bonnet catches, undercarriage, door hinges, underside plate, um, glass corner in the car that we talked about, arches and wheel nuts. Is there anything else? Well, generally, those are the things that I tend to miss. Um, if you're new to detailing, when you wash your car, I think it's almost as important to have the hogshead brush out with you so that when you're doing that, you just poke into areas like this, you poke into areas like that, you can do all this, you know, everyone's good at doing this, poking around the headlights, poking, poking everywhere, you know, poking under the little door handle catches, uh, poking around the wing mirrors and in the little gaps there, you know, on the wing mirrors, um, and especially on the front grills, you know, the brush is much better for getting in between the, all of these grills that get a bit, where are they? There, you know, in those gaps. And um, again, when you bring the car in, sometimes you think you've washed it because you haven't poked in there. You can see that sort of rough haze of all of the dirt that builds up. So I hope this video was really good. There's a million and one other things I think that I've probably forgotten areas that you can miss. We haven't really talked about the interior. In there is a gap. Right, right between the glass and the windscreen where you can't really get your hand and you can get a little spatula or something, you know, like a plastic cake maker and ram it in there. Um, all sorts of little areas under the seats is another classic one. So let me know in the comments what areas you miss and what areas I've missed to miss in this video because there will be some. But this was just a quick brainstorming based on all the things that I miss. So what do you miss? Thank you very much for watching, guys. Just a quick video today. Hope you're doing well. Um, the car, um, a track day, and I've washed it, and it's kind of like the paintwork. It feels all right, actually. Just feels all right, but when I was washing it, it, did, it didn't feel like it good. You know, once you've done a, like a full detail on the car and you've polished it all and protected it, the next wash, you really feel it. Whereas now I'm feeling with this car, it's been through, it's been a while since I've done anything with it. Uh, I've got some little stone chip touch-ups I've got to do again. <laughs> Not the same ones, new ones. Um, I've got some more chips in the front windscreen. Ironically, not from track days, just from driving around. It's usually when I drive to a track day, I'm cursed. I get a chip on the way. So eventually I'm gonna replace this glass, but I figure this M4 glass seems so prone to chipping. What's the point? Just let it get chipped up. But um, Martin, there's a new PPF product coming out for glass. There's, there's, they've been there before. They exist, but they're, they're problematic and they're soft. And glass is a very tough material. And even with glass over the years on older cars, you'll see where the, the grit that's been rubbed over it from the windscreen wiper blades has sort of slowly scratched away at the glass. Well, the PPF's even softer, so that happens a lot quicker. But there's a new product out. Don't know if it's any good. But I don't care if that PPF gets marked up so much. If it lasts a year and it helps prevent chips, I'm sold. I'm sold. I'll have it done. Might even the race, I can't remember the name, Andy, I think it was. Andy who did the race GT3 with a special, special toughened kind of glass thing. Anyway, I'm ranting here. I was thinking about asking him to put that on my car, even though you'll see it because it's not cut to fit. It will just stop the chips. The chips, they're everywhere. Um, so there we go, guys. Some things that you might miss when you're uh, detailing a car. Really hope that's useful. Be all the little crevices like under there, getting there with the getting there with the hogs here. Get it all out. Get it clean. And then once you've done that, that's a good platform to then go on and spend a bit of time enjoying, um, you know, the process of like polishing it and putting a wax on it or whatever you want to do. That's the real fun bit, isn't it? That's the bit where you have final touches where you bring up the shine. My tires are filthy. Um, I'm not cleaning those because they're shredded. They're going to be coming off the car um, soon. What's going on with the M4? Um, I need new tires, which I'm going to get. And I think I'm going to actually go over to Cup 2s um, and just try them out for the summer. And I'll get through them quite rapidly. <laughs> like very rapidly. Probably like two months and they'll be gone. And then I'll probably go back to the 4S's. Uh, or see if I can get 5S's in my size. I don't think I can. Um, or I might try the 4S star rated BMW ones. 
don't know the difference really. I might try those. Once you've committed to a tyre, it's hard to then transfer the tyre without making the cut with all four of them. And you usually find that two of them, or one of them, will still be good. But I've tried to destroy all four tyres, and I've destroyed three, which isn't bad, and one is still quite good. And that one is newer than the other ones, but I've got to take the hit. I really tried to, to destroy them, have a damn good go at destroying them. What else do I also need to do? I need new front pads at the front. Um, so I need to get some new um, front padded RSC um, brakes, which is what I'm running in there. I like those, they're good. Um, what else do I need to do? I need to change the camber setup on the car to stop this uneven front tire wear. Um, when you're driving the car hard, you destroy the shoulder of the tyre and you can't adjust the camber enough on the M4 to ever prevent that. So I'm thinking of getting camber plates put on, not full racing ones. Um, I've been speaking to Centre Gravity um, and they recommended the street ones, which so they don't, they're not so compromised because I use the car on the road as well. I don't want this to be like a race car. Um, and I can always take the camber plates off if I'm not happy, but the wear rate on the outside edge of these tires is ridiculous. Like it just destroys them because you can't put, there's not enough camber on it. Um, the rears are okay. Rears still, the rears still, I think need a bit more camber, but they don't get destroyed quite as easily unless you really, really sort of like, you know, really go in for it or you do two long stints, you know, you over, you do a session and you keep going. You don't want to do that. You can tell when they start going off and they start getting hot, you're really going to tear them up on the outside edges, but mainly on the front. You can feel it when they start tearing up. It, the front just doesn't grip and it happens way too quickly. Um, yeah, so that's what's going on with the car. I'm also going to get an oil service done, even though I had one done what, a year ago. Uh, maybe less, I can't remember, full service on it. I'm gonna get that done because I've done, you know, the odd track day on it since then. Um, and I'll get the brake fluid done again and I'll, I'm gonna ask how much it costs to get the diff and the gearbox um, fluids done. Why not? Just maintain the car properly, um, which is what you should do. So there we go, guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon on the Forensics Detailing Channel. Do not forget to subscribe.